Greetings, future secondary educators. Let's take a look at the underpinnings of trigonometry, and by that I mean let's take a look at the unit circle. Uh, this is a unit circle, circle of radius 1. Uh, there's this acute angle theta right here, uh, and you can assume that those are right angles, and though that's a right angle, and that's a right angle. You can assume all of that. Uh, take a moment. Hit the pause button. Decide for yourself how long certain segment lengths are in this picture, perhaps in terms of theta. There's an E just off screen uh, that I couldn't bring in. Maybe I can. Nope, I cannot. Uh, take a moment. Pause the video. Identify the lengths of segments in that picture in terms of theta. Uh-huh. Almost time. You're not actually pausing it. Okay, yes, you are. Um, OA is 1, right? From O to A, that's a radius of the unit circle, so that's 1. Uh, similarly, OD is also 1. It turns out that AB is the sine of theta. Uh, so let's talk about sine theta. Uh, sine theta, sine comes from sinus. Uh, sinus is a mistranslation of a word that means half chord. Literally, somebody who had one job got that job wrong, and now we call it a sign. But it means, ha in the original, it meant half chord, uh, which is pretty straightforward if you take a look. Uh, that is half a chord. Cosine. Cosine is the sine of the complement, which makes sense if you think about it. Hopefully you also recognized that CD has a length tangent theta. Hopefully you figured that out, that CD has a length equal to tangent theta. Go figure. Why would they call it tangent? Go figure. Does that make sense to you that this line segment would have a length called tangent theta? And sure enough, sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta over 1. There are good reasons why that's true. You should process all of them. Uh, if this is tan theta and this is 1, then OC is secant theta. Uh, why would that lie on a line? called a secant? I don't know. That's a good reason. Good thing to think about. You should also know that EF has a length equal to cotangent theta because that is the tangent of the co-function, of the complement. Ah, it's the tangent of the complement. The complement. There's the complement. That's the tangent of the complement. And that means that OE is cosecant theta for exactly the same reason. Okay, the unit circle is ubiquitous uh, in trigonometry, and it is at bedrock in trigonometry. You should also know that the Pythagorean identities all come off of this picture. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is secant squared theta. Cotan squared theta plus 1 is cosecant squared theta. All of those are right there in the picture. They can easily be verified. Uh, you can also easily verify that cotan theta is 1 over tan theta. That's easy to verify in the picture. Uh, or that uh, cotan theta is cosine theta over sine theta. That's easy to verify in the picture. So there's a lot of things in that picture that you know about trigonometry that are not these random rules from everywhere. They come off of this picture, and that is oh so very important. Oh so very important. Because let's think about it like this. Uh, let's let's think about something very familiar to us as trigonometers, which is not a word. Uh, let's think about cosine of alpha plus beta. So you have your unit circle, 
and you have some angle alpha, and you have some angle, uh, let's call this negative beta. Uh, so alpha plus beta, so there's beta, alpha plus beta is over here. Uh, because we're on the unit circle, the coordinates of this point are the cosine of alpha plus beta and the sine of alpha plus beta. And the coordinates of this point are the, wow, that was, that was unexpected, are the cosine of alpha and the sine of alpha. And the coordinates of this point are the cosine of negative beta and the sine of negative beta. So here's what we know. We know that this segment here and this segment here are congruent because uh, we've rotated by alpha plus beta. We've rotated by alpha plus beta. Uh, all of these are radii of the same circle. So by side angle side, the triangles are congruent. And so the green dotted segment is as long as the red dotted segment. So this is the point one zero. We do distance formula on the green segment. We do distance formula on the red segment. And those have to be equal. Well, what's the left side? We expand, that's cosine squared of alpha plus beta minus two cosine of alpha plus beta plus one plus sine squared of alpha plus beta. What's the red? The red is cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared of negative beta. Well, that's, that's easy. Uh, minus 2 cosine alpha cosine negative beta, which is cosine beta, plus sine squared alpha uh, plus sine squared negative beta, minus 2 sine alpha sine negative beta, and those quantities are equal. Well, we know that cosine squared and sine squared of the same angle add to 1. And we know that that happens here also. I'm so sorry. We should have left this as a negative beta. And we should have left this as a negative beta so that we can say cosine squared plus sine squared. That's also 1. So sorry. So what's the left side? That's a one, that's a one, that's the thing we want. What's on the right side? That's a one, that's a one. And then we have minus two cosine alpha cosine beta, minus two sine alpha sine of negative beta. And those quantities have to be equal and the twos drop and the negatives all go away, and you get the formula that you're familiar with, where the cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And we did it with an understanding of the unit circle and how it works which is why in an Algebra 2 with Trig course, we insist on teaching the unit circle to teenagers so that you can prove things with rigor and not have them fall from the sky. Hope the 10 minutes has been valuable. See you next time.